sawa. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, we thank you for this day that you've given unto us, for everything that you have done, dear Lord God Almighty, since the time that we came here on earth to this day. Father God, it has all been by your hand, Father God. And if there is any moment in time that we have thought and we have maybe entertained the thought that it is about the efforts that we have done, of how good we are, of how good giving we give, and how generous we think we are, dear Lord God Almighty. May Father, may you show us, dear Lord God Almighty, that it is just by your hand, Father, that we have even that to give. That Father God, that even it is by your hand that we were able, dear Lord, to come to this place, that it has taken no other person but you. So Lord, we do not want to take your place, Father God, but we want to give it back to you, dear Lord God Almighty. May you speak to us, dear Lord, in languages that we can only understand, for you know our hearts, dear Lord, you know our minds. There is no one else who knows us better than you. You. Father God, you deserve all our praise. You deserve all our honor. And as we have sung, dear Lord, we know, Father God, that you are great. And it is written that truly you are great, Father God. Even as we start, be with us and protect us, dear Lord God Almighty Father. For you have said where two or more are gathered by your name, your presence is here. It's the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. Uh, for those who maybe nimekuja hapa nikihema hema, Mume miss my name. My, name's, my name is James Kimani. Lakini najulika nanga kama Kimu, yu ni jena ya mta. Kenda mali pengine ulize Kimu ni nani, I, utashundo yu ni nani ya unaita. So Kimu ni jena tu ya mta, ni jena ya zima. And I'm really honored to be in front of you today. Kabisa. So let me give you a quick story of how I ended up standing here. As already you know, it is not by my effort, it is by God's hand. But let me give you a quick story. This day, I was like, So I guess it was one week and some few days, maybe three, four, if I'm not wrong, when I got a call from Pastor Brian Moshigadi, and he, my youth pastor, and he told me that, uh, so to me encounter and I've been praying about the person who is going to be leading this service, the first service, and your name has been recurring to my mind. So that was, to just tell you the truth, that was the fastest way I have ever sweated in my life. Ata he could take effort. Hakustua, hakufak chiyote, nothing. Pesa, si kutumia the wrong person, and pesa. Like it was the fastest way that I ever sweated in my life. Because at that moment, I thought, what do I really have to share with the people of God, with the congregation standing here? Well, uh, when, I'm, when I'm preaching to the youth and uh, sharing with Axis, it's a different story. That was what I thought in my head. It was a different story altogether. But slowly by slowly, as the day continued, before to talk about the day, so I went back at home, and I, I spoke to my mom, and I was just looking at the calendar. She was supposed to be here, but apparently as she was waking up, so she's at home. But, uh, so I was looking at the calendar, and I was really confused. I was really confused. Bado Sikwa ni me give in to the idea that I'm going to stand at the first service and speak. Kwanza, you know the thing about the first service is everybody who stands here wanakonga fluent in English. So I had so many things going on in my mind. Second service, ni sawa. Third service, ata tu So it was, it was something else. But uh, as I was looking to, at the calendar, still confused, I, I told my mom, hey, mom, sasa, sasa tu nimepigiwa na mwashi, na leo si kukusalimia tu amekusalimia, because most of the time when we speak with uh, Pastor Brian, uh, most of the time to na ending it kisema and say hi to your family. Yeah. So this time round, uh, there is something I need to tell you first before you call me kusalimia. And I told her, uh, nimechaguliwa kuhongea first service. And the smile that I saw on her face is not what I was expecting. Truth be told, nilikuwa angoja niambie, I, okay, utatayarisha tu vitu and you'll be ready, but this is the exact words that came afterwards. She said that this is the words that 
uh, aliamkia asubuhi as she was reading she was doing her morning, devo morning devotion that for me and my house we shall serve the lord and that was a confirmation that truly it is god who spoke to him and as i went on nikienda kwa duka thinking my things and doing moja mbili tatu it came to my heart as i was thinking about it still that why am i being afraid why am i really afraid of standing before people and sharing the word of god isn't it the same god who actually took me from the dumps to where i am right now i have seen his hand it is not about my hand it is about his hand i have been interacting with his word is it, it it is not my my conscience or anything that i do know of it is his words that have covered my conscience and has made me to become what he wants me to become or to become to, to go on to the journey of who i am becoming and when i say i it is for all of us because the same words that i do read in scripture is the same words that are in your scriptures so at that moment i realized that it is just my flesh playing around with my mind it was not from the spirit because the spirit already because he already made it possible he already me gave me the grace to stand before you many years before i was born today is just a manifestation of what has happened in the spirit so this is the thing that i want to say it is written in scripture that everything that we see in the flesh or anything that we see have come from the spirit have come from where that it is unseen and the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are the things that are unseen are permanent but the things that are seen and te are temporal so i just had to put my mind to the spirit of god to realize that this day already happened because it was predestined sawa sawa to go up to speed sasa tuko pamoja at this day hapa tumekaa chini haya sawa tunaanza so this week has been the harvest conference week and we have been having so such powerful uh, speakers from the morning devotion till the last one ile usiku uh, the revivals they have been really powerful i have been blessed i hope you have also been blessed so mo most of the things that i'm going to spoke, speak about some of the things that i'm going to the things that i'm going to speak about i'm going to borrow from some of the things that have been said sawa sawa so ukisikia ni may mention don't switch off ai nilisikia hapana the word of god is alive and active every single day every single time there is something that you can learn from it sawa sawa so the title for those who are writing the title of my 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 sharing today is the journey we are all in a journey it's a journey sorry it's a journey we are all in a journey each and every one of us that's why towards the end of it all we are going to hear the words from we're all waiting to hear the words from our father welcome good and faithful good and faithful eh to listen my see lecture hall sindio yes good and faithful servant we're all waiting to hear those words from god sindio so it is all a journey from where we started from where where it all started when we came to this earth till the end but i want us to understand that this journey has already been seen to the end that the only thing that makes it seem uncertain at times is when we decide to use our sight instead of faith sawa sawa so let's just jump into the word and uh firstly the, uh, the 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 word the theme of the conference was the return so it is a build up from the theme so i have with me here kwa historia the journey uh, i have divided it into two facets and then we may divide tena into further so the first part is called the return now kwa the first part if you are writing can write part 1 is called the return now for part 1 there is 1 1 and then there is 1 2 the 1 1 is choices then the 1 2 is repentance and then the second part is uh, i've called it dwelling and thriving in the kingdom of god and the one and now the 2 1 is the word of god and the 2 2 is the holy spirit 
Father, may you talk to us in a language that we may all understand. Amen. We want us to turn to the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 15. We're going to read the story that we are all familiar with. The book of Luke chapter, media team, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I'm really sorry, give me a minute. So we are going to read together. Luke chapter 15, verse 11, it says, Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said, his, The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his living hood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with a prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he set him into its field to seed, feed swine, sorry. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods and the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him had, and had compassion and ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Thank you. Santi Sana. So we're going to reach there. The rest, we all know how it all goes. I want to make some your portion of scripture so that we can uh, the scriptures that we have just read. So as we had said, the first, the first, to uh, make some divide into two, Sindio. The first one, the first part is the return. The second part is dwelling and thriving in the kingdom. Now, for your the return, I don't know how you're going to do it. Maybe you can underline it or you can start a, a new line. Just write part one, the return. Not to, to deal up Kidogo for the next maybe 10 minutes, then we can go to the other one. Uh, so part one, one, no part one. Now one one apo chinyake is choices. I want us to understand something about choices. And media team, could you just uh, project John chapter 7 verse 17 and it says if anyone wills to do his will he shall know he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority now there's something that you need to understand about choices every choice that we do make in life it is based on what we will to do I understand that we all know that there is the will of God and there is the will of man. Are we in agreement? That your will, being if you, if you decide to put your will against the will of God, decide kufanya, if we, let's say Kimu decides, mimi nitafanya vitu based on how I know them. And then God decides to tell me that that is not the way I want you to do my things. I want you to do this way. The, the road that I decided willingly to choose and to follow will not give me the results that God has placed in, from, in front of me. I might get results, but it might not be exactly what God wanted me to get from it. It is a shortcutted way to get to the kingdom, but let me present it to you. You might miss it all if you decide to do things based on your will. That's why God says, has told us in his book, if we decide to do the things, based, if we willingly decide to do the things based on his will, then we shall know that this is the sound doctrine, that I'm not speaking of my authority, but the authority of my father. The same Christ told 
the, told the people when he was sharing the word, he told the people that it is not by my own authority that I say these things. That these things that I do say are the things that I hear my father say. These things that I do do, do is the things that I see my father do. You see, it is all about aligning our will to the Lord's will. Now, choices is based on where our will stands. Sour, sour. So where is your will directed to? Is it directed to, the, to doing the will, the works of God? Or is it directed in doing the things of the world? The Bible tells us that, we, that don't you know if you are friends to the world, then you are becoming an enemy to God. Hakuna shortcut. You can't love God and love the world at the same time. You will do one and forget the other. Cindy, are we together? So it is based on choices. Choices are everything. Like for instance, if you were to take the story of the prodigal son, to decide to maybe prodigal son apa ni mimi, to decide ah, okay, it will not make sense. Let's just take the in context of how it is written in scripture. So the prodigal son ako apa najivinjari, najibamba ako maisha ya dunia kuruka. Like it is by his choice. Because we see him going to the father and asking for his own share. Was he, are we told that he was told by someone that this is the lifestyle you should choose? No, it is not disclosed to us by scripture. So this is a decision that he made by himself. And there is nothing that I don't, I, 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 I have in my mind how I think about the human will is if you have decided to do something, you will stick to it until there is a change. Are we together? So he decides, Mimi by the Ninataka kwenda kujibamba. Aka decide kwenda kumaisha ya nasa. Palipopote alikuwa ataka. And he went to a different, a far off country. Aka enda kajibamba uko. But it was a choice. And I'm so sure at this particular moment, if maybe I was a friend to him, not saying that I am perfect. Don't get that in your head. If I was a friend to him and decided, I know his father and I know his other brother, and I know where he comes from, and what he's doing is wrong, and I decide to go and take him from that country, kama mbi amelala, ama amelewa, alafu ni mlete home, two scenarios will happen. He will not stay at home and he will go back. There is no point of him staying, because he willingly chose to do that. So when you have made up your mind to do something and you stick to it, there is no convincing that can be done. It is so hard to happen. The only person that can save you at this particular point in time is Jesus Christ. Sawa, sawa. So there is a choice that you already made. Then, uh, I'm going to refer also to another scripture. Uh, media team, if you could project to us the book of Genesis chapter 3. Thank you. Genesis chapter, excuse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. But first of all, we're going to read the verse 4 first. And it says, uh, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat therefore. Uh, please give us uh, NKJV. As they change the version, this is the story of the fall of man. Thank you. Uh, verse 4. Uh, this is the story of the fall of man. Ile uh, time Ome decide that uh, they had not decided first. Excuse. They have when Angelation had the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Thank you. It says, uh, Then the, the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. 
Now, the devil knew one thing. The devil knew that Adam and Eve had a will. In as much as maybe, let's say, in quotes, maybe Adam and Eve never knew that they had a will, in quotes, then the devil knew that they had a will. Remember that the devil is cast out from heaven. If you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, you get to see, and Revelation, you get to see all that happened to the devil. So he knows it from the very first time, that it is by my willingness to try and overthrow God in his own kingdom that I ended up to this place. So the only way that I can do, maybe if these men, not men, these human beings do not know uh, about the will, is to try and convince them to do what God said, because there is nothing that the devil creates. It is everything that is here is created by God. The only thing that the devil does is to create his own way. That is not the truth. So, so. so uh, now we see that the devil tries to trick, uh, to trick, to trick them. Amenda akawongelesha, akawambia, one thing, you shall not surely die. The truth of the matter is, you shall die. That is what God told Adam. But now the devil comes and says that you shall not surely die. But the truth, and according to God's will, was you shall surely die. So there is nothing that can change that. And the devil knew that, that they shall die. But now, if you can project it again, verse 6, it says, after the conv- verse 5 and 6, after the convincing, after, after Eve was told about these good things that shall happen, you shall have the knowledge of God. You can be able to, to know what is good and evil. For God knows that in the day you eat, eat, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, like knowing good and evil. When you read from King James Version, and don't just, don't, don't change. Uh, when you read from King James Version, it says, and you'll be like gods, small, the small g. That now you shall be knowing some things that you didn't know before. Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for eat, good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the trees, tree desirable to make one wise. Before you move, go back. We, now we want to see. It is now based on the choice. They already are willingly giving in to the will of the devil. Hapa. Amesema vitu zake, akawachanganya, ikawafraisha. But at this moment, it, is, it, does, it does not read. And now the devil saw that the tree was good for food in the eyes of humans. The devil is no longer in the picture. He did, he did it his part. Now it is the woman seeing that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant in the eyes, and the tree is desirable to make one wise. She took off its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband with her, and he ate. Now it changed from the point of it was just a statement to becoming a reality. And after it was good to the sight and pleasant to be eaten, and it was good to make somebody wise. Now it was all up to them. We do not hear about the devil anymore until the, the point he's also given a consequence. The rest was made up in the mind of the man and the woman. Sawa sawa. So the choice, so will is really important. So you choose things. We choose things. But in this return edition, I want us to understand that it is from a point of choice. Just a, just, just a, a story. Arakaraka as we close this story about the choice. I don't know how all of us came to Christ. Each one and each and every one of us have different stories on how we ended up following Christ. Cindy, I don't think it's the same. At place Moja City Water and Bam, which decided we are going to follow Christ. My story is uh to a dunia vibaya sana. Me and the world we were best friends. Because I had so many things. I had nilikuwa na grudge with God about my father, about how life is, about the things I'm going through in school. I'm in a good school, like in that good school, 
it is, to me, I feel like it's God trying to show off because I can see other people's, uh, my, my, my fellow students coming with cars and doing this great stuff. Na mimi niko hapa, nina kanyangana na rukagina, tunasum, kwanza ile time kulikonga na kunguni zima man. Ay, 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 ay. Na wanajua mimi metoka zima, mimi na kwambe nilihama, nilienda kasarani. Like it was, it was, I was going through so much, and in, at the back of my mind, I couldn't see it as a blessing. I was seeing it as something bad. I was seeing it as something that God is just trying to boast in his way. So I thought my life was so bad. I came to stories, clubs and everything, and I had a really good reputation. And I don't know how we all came to this place. But me, I remember that day telling my friends, I'm not going to go out with you. I have tried the world enough times. It was two years or three years down the line. I told my friends that I'm not going to go with you. It was 31st. I'm going to stay at home, and I'm, go not also going I'm not going to come to crossover also. I made a decision. I'm going to stick at home. Everybody at home left, and I was left there watching the screen. Ninangalia Groove Party looking at how people are just dancing to the Lord. And the same Willie Paul that Saizi Ame, we know about his story, is the same that me. Eh? Eh? I'm okay. The same Willie Paul that Ame, we know about his story, is the same person that made me come into this side. As I was listening to his songs, as I was dancing, just seeing it. And I told God, I will try you. I didn't tell God that I'm going to come fully. I will try you. Because I was so in too deep. The rest is history. I am telling you, it only comes from a point of choice. When you willingly decide, everything follows. Life afterwards wasn't really easy. Because I had to because Christ now was ile boasting ilikuwa nafikiria sasa ni ile ya ukweli sasa alikuwa na cut my friends one by one one by one those are friends that i really held dear to but right now four years down the line i see it as different it was meant to happen sawa sawa so let's move on uh, let's always remember it's about choice uh, something just as we my goodness. Something as just as we wrap up, we want us to understand that in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 17, don't project it. Let me just read it from my notes. It says in the King James Version, and when he came to himself, I want us to understand that it is when he came to himself. Other version says when he came to his senses. That we as human beings, we as children of God, we as people that have been created by God, we have a point that we ourselves can say that I choose to follow Christ. It is not about you being dragged to be brought inside, but it is about you to stand firm by your two feet and saying that now I am going to do this thing. For our generation, let me just mention something because we were not there before. Uh, our parents do quite uh, an excellent job by telling us that we need to follow Christ. It's not because that, that is what, uh, what will I say? It's not that that is what has been, uh, billboard, advertisement, it is because they have tasted the goodness of God that they tell us to, that we need to be in the Lord. Yesterday as we were doing our cell, uh, I realized that when we were talking about prayer points, that there was one thing that really stood out among the people, I, mean, I can say my, uh, I come from Bridge of Hope Cell. Like the people who I can refer to them as my mom in that group were saying, uh, prayers have power, prayers have power, prayers have power. And it was a recurring thing. But deep in my heart, I realized that it was not something that they had spoken about. Prayers do have power. And that is something that they have seen. There is a track record. There is a report card that they can refer to that prayers do have power. Sawa, sawa. So when we, hear being, uh, when we hear our parents telling us that we need to go back to Christ and we need to pray more and we need to do 
the things of God, it is the truth. It is not advertised anywhere, it is the truth. They have tasted the goodness, so sichoke kuskia prayers have power and you need to be in God. So uh, at this point I'm going to rush because I don't want to go back with anything that I have that, the God, that God has for you. So part two, not part two, but uh, 1.2 is about uh, repentance. And uh, allow me just to read from my scripture. Ah, sorry, not from my scripture, from my notes. Uh, Luke chapter 15 verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Excuse, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, one thing, if you, I will just allow me to give you an, an assignment. When you go back home, just reread the, 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 the story again. First of all, he came to him, his senses himself and he rehearsed what he was going to say. Now, that is being fully persuaded of the things that you do want. He was fully convinced that Kama, the servant at home, he, the person at home has enough to eat and has enough to preserve. I can just go back to become a servant. He knew the promises that the servant has been given. Now, when he was coming back to his, when, when he decided to come back, ni after Mary has in his head again and again, eh, once, we are told only once, and then he decides to go, and even Akiwa po kirihas, but only gonna say about the words that he's going to say about his repentance. So he goes and tells his father, in verse 21, eh, that I have sinned against you and against heaven, I've sinned against heaven and against you, but his father at this particular moment in time, Ako, really excited. Like we are told that on our way off, that he just ran and hugged him. Should I just give to you a scripture in the, in the in, just say a scripture in the word that says, that the Bible says in the book of James, draw near to me and I shall draw near to you. That God already had started drawing, not God, but his father, but in context, God already started drawing near to you whenever you, ch you started thinking about the, the story in your head. The moment that you convinced yourself and you're fully persuaded, the moment that you came to your senses and decided to go back to him. Now that is repentance. But it comes from a choice. build up. It starts somewhere and goes somewhere. Now then the next point is now you doing the whole thing and that is repentance. So when you go to the, the, the next part, dwelling and thriving in the kingdom and uh, two one, we talk about the word of God, and I would like the media team to please uh, project the book of Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. King James version, please. Thank you. It says, "Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Now it is. The, the Bible, as we know of it, is a manual that has been given to us as believers. We need to understand it. Now, I'm going to mention some few scriptures and some few things that we need to understand about the Bible. Some, not all, some, just to highlight. According to how I have interacted with the Word of God, I understand that they are warning against the schemes of the devil. Now, when we say that the Bible is a manual, it means like just any other thing. When you buy a phone, it comes with a manual. When you buy uh, anything, any product, it comes with a manual on how you're supposed to use it. Sindio. Now, that is exactly how the Bible is. We are a product of God. God is our source. So he knows our A to Z. We cannot add anything and we cannot deduct anything. If you want to know where you're supposed to go, where you're, what is your will and what is your purpose, it all is here in the Bible. So the, Bi the Bible says, study and show yourself approved so that you, do, you should not be ashamed. In the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 11, just, you can just write it down, uh, it talks about 
you serving God, you serving Christ, you can never be ashamed. Like these things are, these truths are things that we're supposed to be having in our hearts. When it comes to the book of John, when Christ says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, that is truly what he means, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So meaning that we can never come or we can always, we will always fall short of the truth if we do not follow him. We will always be wayward if we do not follow him as the way. We will always be dead if we do not see him as the life. Sawa sawa. Everything belongs in scripture. It is all in scripture. All we need to do is just read and read and read and read and read. And that's how faith comes. By us continually reading the word of God. Sindio. Now, uh, some of the things that we need to understand, these are the things that uh, Moashi mentioned and also Mam Alice mentioned during the Harvest Conference, is uh, we need to understand that distractions are, are always thrown to us by the devil. Now, the devil knows the truth because uh, the reasons as to why, if you go to the book of Revelations, chapter 12, when it talks about now salvation has come to heaven and all those things, uh, then it, it goes ahead and tells us, woe oh, you the people of, of the earth, because, woe oh, unto you the people of the earth, because the devil has come to you, and that he knows that his time is limited. His work here is to make sure that he distracts you to the time that you have been given on earth. Mwashi stood here, Pastor Mwashi Gadi, sorry, stood here and said, uh, and he, he said these words, that it is, a point, it is an appointment to us, that the, the time that we leave this earth, we cannot add. It is already decided upon. Sindio? So that's the thing. So what the devil knows that he can play around with is just distract you during the time that you are here on earth. What Mam Ali said is, you cannot return after you're gone. That minute that you're gone, 0 0.00 microseconds, you can't. You can only return now when you have time, when you are alive. Sour, sour. So meaning that the devil is so crafty and he knows his game. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, he is intelligent. Like when the Bible says that something is intelligent, you better know that it is intelligent. It is a warning. Sawa, sawa. Not here to praise him or to scare you, but it's, I'm here to just uh, glorify the word of God. He is intelligent. That's the truth. We have read in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4, that the prince of this world, the devil, has blinded the children of God from seeing light. That is his play. Have we not read the book of Romans chapter 1, when it says that the people of the earth decided that their light is going to be darkness, and God gave them to, the, his dark, to their darkness? It is because there is somebody in play, and he's called the devil. And the only way we can beat him and beat his schemes are... Uh, um, just allow, please, five more minutes. The only way we can beat, uh, the only way we can beat his schemes is by staying in the word. Is by having the word to counter, attack everything that he throws. Anakuja anakuambia, unajua nini? Wewe na God, mumeko sana vibaya sana. Vibaya, like nothing can come, nothing can happen between you and God. Unamuambia, don't you know? that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Ha! That whomsoever believes in him. Kwanza wanamuambia, kwanza yo whomsoever ni mimi sai. Believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Na wanamuambia, kwanza wewe na kujua sana. My father told me that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. But who you people lapa? Because I am representing generations. Can I hear an amen? Because the people here that I am representing shall serve the Lord and we shall know that knowledge and we shall keep you off. We shall submit to the, farm, to the, to, to the Lord and, we, and, you sh and resist you and you shall flee. My God, my friend, you know I have things at my fingertips. And it is not just in my fingertips, it is in my heart. Because out of the abundance of your heart, 
the mouth speaks. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Media team, come on, Ama, should I just do it? I can't beat technology, eh? So, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, and it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Like this is Joshua being told these words by God, that you should not let the words of the law depart from what? Your mouth. And the only way that it will not depart from your mouth is by you meditating it day and night. Christ came and told us, out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. So what is in your heart will always keep you safe. And if Christ is in your heart, then the devil has nothing against you. He can only play with you, but you can only give in if you want. It's a choice. Sawa sawa. But if you have willingly given to the will of God, let me tell you, sound doctrine will be your best friend. You will listen to things that are being said, songs that are being, uh, being, being sung, things that are way off, vitu haziko sawa, and you shall know at that particular moment that is not the God I serve. Because we are living in a generation where things are getting very weird. Sijikama, the other generations ilikuwa hivyo. But I believe right now is because of the, this gadget, social media and everything. Things ni chap chap. Ni kama microwave. Unaingiza chakula, inachemuka. So by the time you just pull your phone, hivi tu kidogo, in seconds you get all the news. Hata huko unaitaji, unasikia sijui mambo ya Cuba, wapi, wapi. Things that you did not want to get, but you get them. But let me tell you the truth, friends. The only thing that can keep us and can keep us well in this game, in this journey, sorry, it's a journey, is the word of God. Having it next to your heart. Because the Bible says, guard your heart, because from it comes what? The springs of life. The only way you can guard your heart is by the scripture. And I will close with, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. I had borrowed just five minutes. I'll scroll close with this. There is this story in the book of, uh, of Second Kings, where Samaria, uh, not Samaria, where Israel was in famine. And when El Elisha, and correct me if I'm wrong, when Elisha was the prophet at that time, he he's told by God that Israel is only, the prophet is going to tell the king that the reason as to why there is famine is because there is somebody who's manning your gate. That the, 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 the famine that was in Israel or the part of Israel that time was there because there was somebody that was standing in their gate and it was not God. Because the rest of the lands were doing well and they were thriving. What had happened is the Samarians had besieged the city. Could that be what is happening to your life? That there is somebody who is manning your gate and you are not aware of? Could that be what is happening in your career? Could that be what is happening in your family? Who is that person that is manning your gate? And as I close with the last part, 2-4, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit shall lead you to all truth. The person who's manning your gate, if he's, he's not or she is not a mambo, he, he, our story, a God, or is, is, it's not God who's standing before their koyo gate, then the Holy Spirit will tell you that he, the person is not supposed to be there, that that is a wrong thing that is happening because I have already given you everything that you do need. So Israel was suffering from a problem that was caused by humans and not God. God already had given them everything. But the person who was manning the gate, the, people, the person who was besieging the city, who are the Samarians, was standing at that place. Could that be what the devil is doing in your life? The only way you can beat him is by beating him with the word of God. 
by beating him with the truth. Let this be your thing, for it is written, for it is written, for it is written, not based on Aristotle and all the philosophers in this world or the doctors or anything that based on the one person who has the answer for everything, and that is Jesus Christ. For it is in him whom all wisdom and knowledge is hidden. Sawa, sawa. I'd like to close at that. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we come before you once more with thanksgiving in our hearts. We glorify your name and we lift up your name, dear Lord God Almighty. Father, we say thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, dear Lord God Almighty, for going before us. Thank you, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, for, for using me, dear Lord God Almighty, to do your work. And Lord God, I pray, Father God, that the seed that has been deposited in our hearts, dear Lord God Almighty, it shall not just be a seed that stands there, that sits there, dear Lord God Almighty, in stagnation, but Father God, it shall grow into its full potential, Father God, that that thing, dear Lord God Almighty, that is in deep, that, that is embedded in that seed shall grow, Father, that nations shall stand to praise you, that we shall always glorify your name, dear Lord God Almighty, that we shall always have an answer, dear Lord God Almighty, to give, and that answer, Father God, may it be based on your word. Father God, for you have said in your word, dear Lord God Almighty, Father, that whatsoever we shall desire, dear Lord God Almighty, that when we pray and believe, then we shall receive, Father. Father God, you have said it, dear Lord God Almighty, that when I go, I shall speak to my Father, and he shall give him give unto you, Father. So, Lord, it's my prayer, dear Lord God Almighty, dear Lord Father, that the people who are seated listening, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, me included, Father God, that you shall refresh us once more, Father, that we shall see and hear more about you, Father God, that we shall be there standing, Father God, for the word, dear Lord God Almighty, not adding or subtracting anything, but taking it as it is, Father God. And Father, I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that whomsoever is in this place, Father God, and has a desire, dear Lord God Almighty, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Father God. I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, the very same way you say, dear Lord God Almighty, that if we ask, we shall receive, and if we seek, Father God, we shall find, and if we knock at the door, the door shall be opened unto us, Father God, that you, shall, you are able and capable, Father God, to give us the Holy Spirit again and again and again. Father God, I also pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that you shall anoint our heads, Father God, and our cup shall overflow. We might be Bible, we might be the Bible that other people see, Father God, because Father God, they have not, they have decided not to open up their word, the word of God to read, dear Lord. But I pray, Father God, that we shall disturb them, dear Lord, everywhere they, they are, dear Lord, until they come to the kingdom of heaven where they belong. Father God, there is no place for the devil in this place, dear Lord God Almighty. It is a journey between me and between us and you, Father God. And dear Lord God Almighty, we are waiting, Father God, for the end, for the end, dear Lord God Almighty, when you're going to welcome us back at home, dear Lord God Almighty, and telling us, Father, good, welcome good and faithful servant. Father God, as we continue with our week, we pray, dear Lord Father, that you're going to, to answer every need that we do have, Father God, and we shall stick in our relationship with you, Father God, growing in you, dear Lord God Almighty, that nations, Father God, that we do represent here, Father God, shall live to serve you, dear Lord, that everything, dear Lord God Almighty, that we do, all the glory and honor shall go back to you. For it's the mighty name of Jesus. I do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much.